Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's we're going to be comparing the Toyota RAV4 TRD Off-Road to the Kia Sportage with the X-Pro package. Before we get in this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Jerry Sander Kia here in Salt Lake for giving me some time with the Sportage. I'll include a link to their website in the description down below. I'll also include a link to my car buying guide in the description down below as well. Let's get into it. Under the hood of the Sportage, we have a naturally aspirated 2.5 liter four cylinder that goes through an eight speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 23 around town and then 30 on the highway with power outputs being 187 horsepower and then 178 pound feet of torque. Under the hood of the RAV4 is a naturally aspirated 2.5 liter four cylinder that goes through an eight speed automatic transmission. Sounds pretty similar so far. Fuel climb with the RAV4, 25 around town and then 32 on the highway with power outputs being 203 horsepower and then 184 pound-feet of torque. So somehow more powerful and more economical. Now, before we move forward with this comparison, I do want to mention if you're gonna see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So starting off with the Sportage, you can see the contrast between the white and the blacked out elements. You can get the Sportage in crazier colors, similar to the RAV4 that we have today. But that's the first thing with the X-Pros, it kind of blacks everything out. Um, something to note, we do have fog lights here at the very bottom with the Sportage. And then popping over to the RAV4, you can see finished in that army green color. You got the fog lights there at the bottom. And notice that both of them, Kind of have normal front ends in terms of the approach angle they haven't done anything crazy because they're the off-road package now turn wheel set up here with the kia is 235 65 17 and we do have all-terrain tires here's kind of a look at those a little bit and the rav4 has a similar setup so it is 225 60 18 it's a little bit less sidewall on the tires a little bit bigger wheels got the trd logo though on the wheels you can see all-terrain tires so I guess the Kia wider tires, and they look a little bit more aggressive with the tread pattern compared to the RAV4 tires. Notice the RAV4 has huge fender flares, whereas the Kia, it's definitely a little bit more understated with that. They both have blacked out mirror caps, funny enough. And you can see you've got some silver trim with the RAV4, whereas the Kia, it's blacked out all of its window trim. And then here's your full side view with the Sportage. And then here's your full side view with the RAV4 TRD. Now let's talk cargo spaces because this is gonna be important for both of the vehicles. First off, I like this covering here with the RAV4 says TRD off-road. And notice it goes up onto the backs of the seats. Yeah, the RAV4 is very spacious inside overall. And then popping over to the Sportage, very similar in terms of the spacing here in the back, we actually have a little 12 volt here in the rear, which is pretty cool. Got those little latches to turn in the seats. So yeah, I mean, they're both pretty similar in terms of practicality. And I do like this with the Sportage, the button's just right there to close it. With the RAV4, same thing. It's got this like little rubber finish on it though for that hatch. Now finishing things up with the rest of the rears of the vehicles, the RAV4 goes hard with the TRD badging. Obviously it had in the wheel, but then you also have it here on the back as well got the double exhaust tips here in the rear and then with the kia it's a little bit less uh, overstated than the rav4 you can see pretty cool taillight design but yeah just a little x pro badge they don't go too crazy uh, i will say though the kia looks kind of more like a traditional crossover the rav4 has a lot of traditional crossover styles cues but you can see it looks a little bit more uh, rugged overall now inside of the RAV4, you can see the trim that goes across the door panel there, and you got more soft touch down below. And again, lots of harsh angles, so it has that kind of more rugged look. And then speaking of more rugged, look at these seats here. Perforated all down the center portion. You got this cool design in the center as well. We do have some vents here. We also have the USB ports. And then legroom here in the back is pretty solid overall, so nice place to be. Taking a look at the door panel here with the Kia, definitely more luxury rather than rugged like the RAV4. So that's kind of the theme they're going for here. And that becomes apparent when you take a look at the seats. So look at the trim here, and then all down the center portion as well. Still get vents here in the back. 
see what the USB ports. Um, and I do have the front seat back pretty far, but it seems like the space is relatively similar. The RAV4 might be a little bit more spacious. So before we step in the RAV4, you can see tier D here in the front seat and look at the design down the center. And then you can see again with the door panel, got a lot of harsh lines, kind of rugged look, blind spot running with the mirrors. And getting in with both these is easy. You just kind of step across, start up the RAV4 here. Kind of a little animation with the RAV4. Boom. Nice material used on the steering wheel, by the way. You can see you've got stuff for the adaptive cruise control. You've got your practical controls there on the other side. And yeah, with that gauge cluster, digital in the center, so that's where you can see different bits of information on the car that you can go through. It's like fuel economy, for example. And then I guess we'll close the door here. We'll see how solid this sounds. That's important for off-roaders, right? Yeah, decently solid sounding. Pop it into reverse. Backup camera here, which directory lines it turn with the steering wheel. And then you guys can see here with the climate controls down below. We also have controls for the heated and ventilated seats, wireless phone charging pad. We've got our shifter here for the eight speed. A bunch of different drive modes. Uh, it's pretty cool, push normal uh, with that. But you basically have on-road and off-road modes. It has a mud and sand mode, which is nice. Now we do have some cup holders down here and then you can see with the center console, pretty good storage, all of that. And then nice trim across the dash, got storage above the glove box and then you have the regular glove box. And then we do have a camera rear view mirror in the RAV4 as well. Uh, sunroof up top, which is nice. And then you can see here with the window sticker, this sticker's for 41725 Now take a look at the seats here in the Sportage. Get more luxury at the theme, and you see the same thing here with the door panel, kind of the angles they're going for on the trim. Got blind spot on just like the Rev4. Again, you just pretty much jump in, which is cool. Stop start button's actually down here, funny enough. Full digital gauge cluster in the Kia, so a little bit different. I guess we'll see how the door's like on this one. Sounds a little more solid, surprisingly. Um, now this does have a cool feature. It's got the turn signal camera. Here's kind of a better look at that. So that's fun. Again, just like the RAV4, nice material use, practical controls on the steering wheel. Now another cool thing that the Kia has over the RAV4 is gonna be the 360 camera system. And you got the exterior shot as well. Now the thing that this doesn't have over the RAV4 is gonna be down here. So it has this thing, which Personally, not a fan of it. Switches between climate and radio controls. Uh, we do still have a wireless phone charging pad. You can see we've got the shifter here. Got heated and cooled seats just like the RAV4. And we've got a big drive mode select system here. So we've got all your drive modes, center locking, diff. And you can see like hill descent control and all that. So it does have quite a bit of off-road tech. And then it has the over-engineered cup holders where I fold this in. You can see that pops out. Good storage here in the center console. Nice trim on the top. You can see with the dash, all of the trim that goes across. No storage above the glove box like the RAV4. Uh, no camera rear view mirror, but it actually has a panoramic sunroof. So that's interesting. And then in terms of the pricing, uh, 40,285 for the MSRP on this one. So with that being said, let's take the RAV4 out, take the Sportage out and see which one drives the best. Oh, visibility here in the Kia. With the mirrors and throughout the rear. Let us set off. This is an interesting comparison because I think that this is the vehicle that the RAV4 is most comparable to on the market because Honda uh, doesn't really have an off road package with the CRV. Mazda has the CX50 that has an off road package, but uh, Mazda's got a turbocharged four cylinder. Not an actually aspirated engine. And then Hyundai, I mean, similar situation. I mean, they've got the X, XRT, I guess you could kind of. But the XRT is not quite as off roady as the X Pro. I mean, the Sportage is basically a Tucson, right? They're the same car at the end of the day. So, yeah, I, I, I feel like this is the most comparable vehicle to the RAV4 when it comes to specs and all of that. But it's interesting, it seems like the RAV4, you're getting more power, but with this, you're getting more tech. 
But I mean, it's, it's decent power. And ride quality is pretty, it's pretty nice over this road. This is a little bit of a bumpier road, which good test for the off-road mommy I should be, right? Because that's ultimately what both of these are. Off-road mom cars. But yeah, it's, it's not bad. It's a nice drive. Okay, well, once we pull out of here, we'll get like a good old acceleration. Smooth, though, with the transmission. I'm glad they do the torque converter automatic for this rather than the dual clutch that they have. Makes more sense for an off-road packaged car, too. See how that compares to the RAV4 in terms of the torquey feel and acceleration and all that. It should, in theory, feel slower and less torquey because it's got less horsepower, less torque. So overall, the X-Pro, basically, Kia's done the Land Rover thing where they put some off-road stuff on a luxury vehicle, which I don't think is a bad thing. Again, I don't think people are actually gonna take either of these cars off-road. So having more luxury features makes sense for what people are actually going to use this car for. So with that being said, let's pop into the RAV4. So visibility in the RAV4, over the hood, both the mirrors, and then through the rear. And let us set off in the RAV4. So what I'll say right off the bat, these seats, Seem to be a little bit more open. I wouldn't say they're more comfortable, but just the bolstering is a little bit more open compared to the Kia. And right off the bat, you do feel the power difference, like just instantly. This feels like a beefier engine. And I think the fuel economy difference between them, it's so fascinating. And I don't know if it's because the, you know, having more power makes it so it's easier to move this car so you don't have to get into it as much. I don't, I don't know. It's it's a pretty big difference. Now let's go full throttle right away. It's not like, oh my goodness, it's way faster, but it is perceivable. It is perceivable with the, the power difference. But I wouldn't say that you would, if you're in the naturally aspirated four cylinder world, I wouldn't say that you're like, oh man, I should have gotten the RAV4 because of the power. It's, it's, it's close enough. Right quality with both of them. Interesting situation. Um, I'd say both pretty comfortable. I wouldn't say that one's more comfortable over the other. And yeah, the interiors are so different. This has that kind of like rugged utilitarian design, whereas the, the Kia, it's more luxury. And so it depends on what theme uh, you like more. But again, the Kia's more tech. So I guess to, to cap things off this comparison, I would, I would put it like this. Um, styling the RAV4 looks more like an off-roader. Uh, the Kia looks kind of more like a regular Sportage, not a bad thing, just reality. Uh, Interior-wise, the Kia is more luxury looking. This is more rugged looking. Um, engine, I prefer the RAV4's engine over the Kia's and it gets better fuel economy. So I think that it's just a, kind of like a net positive overall. The Kia is a little bit less money. So you do have that. That person was Utah people. Uh, so yeah, let me know which one you go for. I think there's pros and cons to both, but I think Kia, even though it's less rugged, less off-roady looking than the RAV4, I think the equipment and everything makes more sense for what people would actually use this for. <laughs> 